So the things I have to look at for my B uh, BMS, and I'll put them up on the wall here, is the battery voltage. I need to know what the battery voltage is. I also need to have current sensors so that I'm monitoring the current going into the power wall, um, but also that is coming out of the power wall when the grid tie inverter is turned on. I need to turn the grid tie inverter on and off, so potentially using a relay or a solid state relay or some way of turning the AC power on and off because the grid tie inverter that I've got, just like any other grid tie inverter really, has no concept of um, battery um, limits and voltages and anything like that. So I'm having to kind of reinvent the wheel and make a product or make something that's going to work and turn things on and off. So I need the inverter to turn on when the battery voltage is say charged, so above 75 volts. And I need it to turn off the grid tie inverter when the battery voltage gets down to 60 volts. So 60 volts is three volts per cell, so that's our flat battery um, voltage. So I need it to make sure that the grid time inverter gets turned off when it gets to 60 volts, but then not turn back on again when it gets to 70, in, until 75 volts. Now the reason for that is that if you've got a load on a battery and you have it turning off at say 60 volts, as soon as you turn whatever load you've got um, connected off, the battery voltage will go back up again and it will go up at, back up to 63 or 65 volts or somewhere around there. It's the same with 24 volts or 48 volts. So you have a, a small voltage um, drop when you've got a load attached, but when there's no load, the battery voltage will slowly go back up. So that's why there's a difference, um, well, there's, a, there's a bigger difference with mine. 60 volts is the cutoff, 75 volts it won't turn back on again pretty much until the next day because it's going to have to charge back up to 75 volts before, before turning back on. So I've kind of got that buffer in there so that the whole system doesn't turn off and then on and then off and then on again. Um, so it covers that. So the other thing is, is that I need a way to turn it off and on again at a particular time so that I don't have the power wall running all the time 24 7. I've got it running during the night time in between say 9 o'clock in the night and 8 o'clock in the morning. I don't want it running during the peak periods of the, of the night when you're cooking and all those other bits and pieces, mainly because I've got 5 kilowatt hours and if it's going to be used heavily over the, the, the peak periods of the night, then it's better off to actually have it running for a longer period of time over the course of the night. So what I've got is I've got it turning on at 9 o'clock and turning it off at 8 o'clock. Now there's a couple of ways I could do this, there's, I could turn off the AC relay on and off um, depending on the time, but that means that the, the time will be fixed in code and then to change it all the time I'm going to have to continuously update the code to adjust the, the on and off timers. I thought a better way and talking to a friend, a good friend of mine, he suggested why not just get a off the shelf 24 hour timer and just do it that way. That way that it's turning on and off you can manually change it and, and set the times and you're not reliant on any code changes or anything like that. And you're also not reliant on it not, for example, the BMS not having the correct time. At least by having an external device that does the, the timing, it makes it much simpler. So that's what I did. I, I ended up getting a 24 hour digital timer, plugging that in, and that has meant that I can adjust the time on there. And I've currently got it set to 9 o'clock at night and 8 o'clock in the morning. So it runs over the periods of the whole night, or pretty much. Um, but after the, the key cooking and other bits and pieces have already happened and that way it's got minimal load through, through the period of the night. But it, it's actually quite good because that means when I add the next 5 kilowatt hours in there, I will adjust the time from 9 o'clock maybe down to 8 o'clock or down to 7 o'clock. So it turns on earlier and eventually as my power wall gets bigger and bigger, I'll eventually have it so that it turns on as soon as it gets dark. But it just gives me easy and flexibility to be able to turn it off and on at particular times. So I've used an, an off the shelf 24 hour timer to do that type of thing. So I'm not including that in the BMS because it's, it's easier not to. Now the other thing is, is that with my BMS I'm needing to have an LCD screen on the BMS so that when I walk out to the garage I can see that the what the battery voltage is doing, what the current's doing, what the state of it is and we'll be able to quickly have a look at what it's doing. Now I'm not in the garage all day every day so it's spending too much time on an LCD screen and a big LCD screen or a fancy display is kind of pointless. I really just need to know the core things 
about the um, what the battery's doing. When I walk into the garage, I need to just be able to see those things. Or if I'm um, playing with it and uh, adjusting different settings, it's handy to be able to see those things on a readout or on a, on an LCD screen. So the next thing that the BMS needs to be able to do, apart from um, displaying and reading the voltage and the current of the three current sensors, um, it needs to be able to, uh, to calculate the state of charge and how many watts, and it needs to be able to get all the information is about seven or eight different um, bits and pieces that it, it's going to that it's displaying or that it's um, that it's got in the code. It needs to be able to send all that off wirelessly to my main monitoring system, so that I can graph it and log it, and I can be able to see. Um, over the period of the night on a nice chart so I can order a nice graph so I can see it slowly dropping at what points of the night. I can also be able to see how many watts has come out of the power wall and it's all those key things. So the LCD screen on the BMS um, is just to have a look at it at the garage. The, the main core part is sending all that data off to my monitoring system because that's what's going to tell me what um, what my BMS or what the power wall is doing. So it needs to incorporate all those type of things. So um, now those extra functionalities obviously uh, a normal off the shelf BMS won't have um, but it is something that you can obviously create and build yourself. However with my BMS obviously I'm building all that into one thing. Now the next step later down the track will be the cell monitoring of each of the cells individually as well as the balancing. Now those two things are very uh, are core things however I'm splitting that off to a separate unit mainly because um, it makes this far too complicated and to be, I need to be able to get something going now and then add these uh, add that extra component later down the track. So the, the first thing is going to be um, building the current sensors and the, the box and the LCD screen and putting it up all on the power wall and putting the um, AC um, relay in there to be able to switch it all on, on and off to have the whole system automated and then the monitoring of the cells will come or the individual cells and the balancing will kind of come in as, as a separate thing. So I hope that's really answered some questions on BMSs in general, but also what my build is for my um, my battery management system for my particular power wall. Now everyone's power wall is different, everyone's systems are different, everyone's um, what what they're currently doing is all very different to mine, and that that's perfectly fine. So I've pretty much having to create my my own customized BMS, which is fun. It's been a very long and um, strenuous. Um, last few months really because one I'm not a coder and two I've had to learn each of these things um, as I go which has made it um, take a long time but it's also meant that I've learned a lot and that's really the key thing is learning so yeah um, next video is going to be the um, the build of the BMS I'll see you guys in the next video and thanks for watching once again I know this has been a long video but subscribe if you haven't subscribed and like the video if you like it so thanks again guys see you on the next video